Get your glasses up. Get your glasses up. A toast to the men. Welcome to A Toast to the Men with your guy, S.D. Booker. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for the support. Before we get started, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button. That's very important for the YouTube algorithm. Take care of that for me. Who are you? This is a, this is a good topic. Who are you? That is a question I asked every woman I interviewed for the book coming May of 2022, Palma Christie. That's the first question I asked them when I interviewed them. Who are you? To my surprise, many had never been asked that question. Many stumbled to answer the question. They had no idea. They were embarrassed. And I told them that's okay. That's okay. They don't have to know it right now. Just, you know, something to think about later on. Now, the ones, the very few who did answer the question, who are you? They start giving me all these, these titles, right? These superficial titles that we place on ourselves, including myself. They start saying, you know, they're, they're a mom, uh, you know, their job title, or some adjectives about them, right? And as I really think about it, most of us, the vast majority, majority of us, excuse me, do not know who we are. When you strip everything away, man, these clothes, uh, cars, homes, uh, titles, job titles, titles that were given within the social construct of a family, mother, father, son, sister, when you strip all that away, we're, we're mindsets. That's all we are. We're, we're, and I don't want to say that's all we are, because that's a huge and, and a beautiful thing. We are mindsets. That's it. When you strip off because uh, you, you think you're beautiful or, you know, you got the big butt or the wide shoulders or wh whatever it may be that identifies you physically. When you strip all that away, you're a mindset. And most of us just don't get it. We don't understand. We go through life identifying ourselves from a superficial aspect, just on physicality, right? And on a cosmetic level, when we never dig deep and say, no, I'm a mindset. That's who I am. That's my identification, my mindset. And if we really did that, it'd be groundbreaking, but also earth-shaking and a great awakening. Because a lot of us uh, are messed up. A lot of us need help. A lot of us need counseling. And most of us, maybe all of us, have to experience a rebirth. You know, like the Bible say, a man must be reborn again. And Nicodemus question, how can a man go back into his mother's womb? Don't quote me verbatim, but the rebirth is the rebirth of the mind, right? Once you have a rebirth of the mind, you'll have a rebirth spiritually. You'll have a different understanding. You won't sweat certain things. You'll have a different outlook on why you're here. You'll know why you're here and you'll start living within your purpose. Now, I had a conversation with a friend, and so I'm gonna to touch on this. We, we touched on this in our conversation, and I'm gonna to touch on this a little bit. And this video won't be long, but this is why it's so important to have a renewal of the mind, because 
what we are, you know, you know about DNA from a tissue or a blood aspect, but there's a spiritual DNA. There's a bunch of spirits in me that my ancestors, right? I'm a manifestation of my ancestors. And then it goes on to my kids and their kids and their kids. The thing is, we can only go back so far to our ancestors. And even when we do go back so far, we only know probably how they looked, uh, the region they were from, their height, their build. But we don't know anything about their mindsets. We don't know. We don't know anything about our ancestors' mindsets. And that's the most important thing. You know, I know in the black community, we get so caught up in, uh, yeah, I got Indian. I got this from my Indian ancestor. My cheeks or my hair or my eyes come from my Indian side or this white side. You know, we get so caught up in that, which is ridiculous and silly, so superficial. It's not even important. But what, what was their mindset? What was their spirituality? Was it healthy? Was it unhealthy? We don't know these things. And so we are an accumulation, a manifestation of that. And we don't even know who we are. That makes us who we are. That's why you have to rewrite the book that has to be a second, third, sometimes a fourth edition of your life, of your mindset. You have to renew your mindset because you can't really trace who you are. You don't know their mindsets. And so we got so much stuff in us we don't even know. And they cause so much chaos in our relationships, but first within ourselves because we don't know who we are. Another thing to that is, you know, I was doing some research and, and I've seen this before to where a woman can have a child and that child looks nothing like the father, the biological father. And it's in fact, that guy's child, uh, yeah, DNA tests have been done, everything. It's in fact, it's his child. But the child looks like a former lover. And the reason that happens is womb imprint that uh, that former lover has imprinted her womb, right? From a spiritual aspect. And the kid can come out looking like him. But it's not his seed. It happens. So. And this is nothing new. Uh, ancient Greek know about this. Look it up. Ancient Greek know about this. They've done study on flies. Where a fly. The, the female fly was impregnated. And it didn't look like the father that impregnated her. It looked like her first, I don't want to say lover, the first male that was with her. But the first male didn't impregnate her. It, it, didn't, it didn't sire her. It didn't take. It was the second male. But the, kid, but the offspring looked like the first fly. And sides and dimensions looked like the first male fly. So... You know, people know about this. Studies have been done. Ancient, like I said, ancient Greeks know about this. And this is one of the reasons why, why they kept the bloodline so protective of who came into the bloodline, who went out the bloodline to procreate. They kept that very protective. And not just procreate, just having sex, casual sex was looked upon, down upon because of that reason. Right, womb imprint, the spirituality of it, that's very serious. This is why virginity and the womb of the woman, not the woman herself, but the womb of the woman, 
was held in high esteem. The womb, not the woman, the womb of the woman was held in high esteem. The seed of the man, not the man, was held in high esteem. Because they knew the impact of mixing up spirits, of mixing up DNA. They knew the impact of it. You know, so if a woman can bear a child that looks like a lover that is not the biological father, it's very possible that child can take on the emotional, psychological, and spiritual characteristics of that person. Very possible. So again, who are you? Did you procreate with a woman that's had many lovers? Did your mom have many lovers? We gotta get back discipline because we're all lost. We don't know who we are. We don't know what's in us from a psychological aspect, spiritual aspect, emotional aspect. We don't know why we act how we act. So we got to renew our mind, establish sound, righteous principles. And then we'll know who we are. We'll definitely know who we are. Know why? Because we wrote that edition. We wrote that edition. So we definitely know who we are and why we're here. But uh, I'm going to go deeper in that topic with a female guest, trying to select who, who the female guest is going to be. But I'm going to go deeper into that. But, uh, yeah, really look into that, who you are. Many people can't answer that. And that's why we're just roaming this earth with no direction, no structure, no order. And we're just waiting to die because we don't have a purpose. We're not living within our purpose. So renew your mind and establish who you are. Tap into who you are. The universe will tell you, or God will tell you who you are. Your higher self will tell you who you are once you renew your mind. You'll know why you're here, and you'll stop wasting time. You'll stop connecting to people that don't serve you any value. They're not assets, they're only liabilities. Facts, I know this for a fact, so that's what I got for you, as always. From me to you, love, peace. Bartender, yeah, let me get a, get a double shot of that uh, boss. Yeah, no rocks, no chasing, baby.